Hello, congregation, family, and friends. I pray that all is well with you today. Uh, we are going to look at a passage today in Matthew chapter 4, and I've entitled this sermon, Following the Call of Jesus. Following the Call of Jesus. We'll be looking at a short passage in Matthew 4, verses 18 down through verse 22. You know, at one time or another, every sincere Christian has to ask this question of himself or herself. What does it mean? What does it truly mean to follow Jesus Christ? What is involved in doing that? We can follow lots of different things in this world, can't we? We can follow a sports team. We can follow some of our favorite musicians. But does that mean that we're, we're following Jesus on that same level, or is he requiring more of us? We have a passage today that I'm going to read to you, and we're going to see just how serious it is when Jesus calls us to follow him. We're in Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to read from verses 18 down through verse 22, and we'll talk about it. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Following the call of Jesus, that's what we're talking about today. Now, wherever you are in your walk with Jesus, and maybe I'm speaking to someone today and you haven't been called by Jesus just yet. Maybe you're not a believer yet. But for those who already are, what does it mean to follow Jesus Christ? I want you to see here that, first of all, in this passage here that's also repeated in other Gospels, Jesus is calling his first four disciples. They were two sets of brothers, and that's not really integral to uh, this message today, but it's just something that I wanted to point out. So we see Jesus. Let's go back and look at this. We see Jesus, and he's walking by the Sea of Galilee. He sees two brethren. One is called Simon, who he would later call Peter, and Andrew, his brother. And what are they doing? They're casting a net into the sea. Why? Because they were fishermen. That's what they were doing for a living. And so Jesus finds these two men casting out their net and doing what they're called to do, which was fishing. They were in partnership with Andrew and John and Zebedee. They were all partners along this port in the Sea of Galilee. And so as Jesus comes along and he sees these men diligently working on their job, then he says to them, in verse 19, he says to them, now this is the key to the whole passage, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. There's two very specific things that Jesus is saying here. Number one, follow me. And number two, I will make you fishers of men. So let's deal with the first phrase. What does it mean to follow Jesus? When he said, follow me, is he talking about occasionally? Is he talking about only when we feel like it? That is a command. He's telling these men, follow me. And guess what? He's talking to us today. He's talking to you and he's talking to me. There are a lot of things in this world that can distract us. It calls for our attention in other places. And that we, there are, let's say for celebrities or whatever, there's fan clubs. Uh, there's people that follow musicians. There's people that even follow bands from town to town to town and they follow them around because they're devoted fans. There are people that go to see the same movie stars over and over, and they see every movie that they've ever made because they're fans. They're following them, or they follow a blog, or they follow this or that. Jesus' call is much deeper than just following someone on a superficial basis. When Jesus is saying, follow me, he's the Son of God. He's Almighty God himself, and he's saying, follow me. No one and nothing comes above Jesus Christ. And so what he says here to these first two brothers, to says to Andrew and to Simon called Peter, he says, follow me. And you and I, we need to always check ourselves and make sure that wherever we're at in our walk with Jesus, that we are following him 
and not get caught somewhere else. As I said, there's many distractions in this world. There's many places that we could put our attention and put our efforts into it. But if we're serious about our faith, if we're serious about our walk with Jesus, we will follow him. But you see, there's a second part to this. It says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That's kind of an interesting phrase. Why does he say fishers of men? Because these men were fishermen. You see, what Jesus is doing is he's telling them that if you follow me, I will make you fishers of men. In other words, instead of just getting fish, instead of just being in the li livelihood that you're at, you are going to actually catch men. You're going to be fishers of men, which is ultimately more important because it involves the soul. It involves salvation. It involves spreading the gospel. And so Jesus is using a phrase that they would understand. Instead of fishing, you were going to fish for men. I want you to also notice here, too, Jesus makes a promise to these men, and it's not just to them. It's to us, too. He says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He didn't say, I might. He didn't say, it's only for certain people. He didn't say, only when you feel like. He says, I will make you fishers of men. I'm going to do it. I will do it. But first, we have to heed the call of Jesus. We have to follow the call of Jesus. When he says, follow me, we need to follow him first. And then, and only then, can he make us a fisher of men. If, if Jesus called you, and you just follow him whenever you feel like it, and, and you may say, well, you know, and you, we try to justify things. Because when I was a young Christian, I did this too. Transparency here. We say things like this. Well, I, I go to church every week. I, I, I give an offering every week. I say prayers. I make sure that I'm kind to other people. I do all of these things. So I am following Jesus. Yes, he's my Lord and Savior. But you see, what happens is we get into a compromise with that. We say, well, if I spend a couple hours a week at church, I can now go off and do whatever I want the rest of the week. No, you can't. If you are following Jesus and you are serious about following Jesus, you've got to follow him all the time. Now, some people will come at you and they'll say, boy, following Jesus, that's really boring, isn't it? You can't smoke. You can't drink. You can't go to clubs. You can't watch lewd movies. You can't do anything. You can't have fun in life. That's a lie. That is a lie. But that is how the devil works on us. And so if we boldly proclaim, I want to follow Jesus, but you only follow him every now and then or only when you feel like it, you are compromising the call. And I submit to you that you are not following the call of Christ. Because when the call of Christ comes upon your life, when he calls you, it's for life. Look at this reaction. Look in verse 20. It says, and they, these are the two brothers that he just said to follow him. It says, and they straight away or immediately, right away, without hesitation, left their nets and followed him. What did you do when Jesus called you? Did, what did you leave behind? What did you have to give up? To, to, to go and follow Jesus? Or, or are you still playing around in the world and you're still compromising? You're a Christian, but you're also into secular things. I'm not saying because we're a Christian that we have to be uh, boring, fuddy-duddies, people that are just religious fanatics, as we're called. But we cannot take the call of Jesus lightly. When he says, follow me, and we follow that call, and we heed that call, we are to follow him regardless of what happens, regardless of who disagrees with it, and regardless of what we have to give up. Notice, these men left their jobs. Now, am I saying when Jesus calls you that you have to leave your job? No, Jesus may not call you to leave your job. He may not call you to move from your home to a different place. Some people he calls to leave their jobs and go into seminary or go into the pastorate. Other people he calls and sends them out to the mission fields. Other people he calls and puts them in music ministry, or they become traveling evangelists. Whatever God has called you to do, it all starts with following Jesus. If we don't do that, we don't follow Jesus, he cannot make us in the fishers of men. He can't use us. Are you see where I'm getting at? Who am I talking to today? Has he called you, and what has he called you from? In this particular case, these two men, it says they left their nets, and they followed him immediately. They followed him. There was no doubt in their mind. Jesus called them. They left. 
They came to realize that they could depend on Jesus, that God would supply all their needs, and whatever their, their livelihood was, it was now over because Jesus was going to make them fishers of men. Are you hearing me? Now, let's look at the rest of this picture. It says, and going on from there, he saw two other brothers. He saw James, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. They were all in partners together. You had Simon and Andrew and James and John and Zebedee, the father of these last two brothers. They were in a ship with Zebedee. And what were they doing? See, Peter and Andrew were casting their net out to reach fish because that's what they were doing, fishing. These two men are mending their nets. When you do fishing, obviously, yes, you can throw out your you can throw out your net, but you know what? Nets need repairs. Obviously, they break because you're bringing in hauls of fish all the time. And so they, again, like the first two brothers, are on the job. They are mending their nets. They're doing their craft. They're doing what they're called to do. But Jesus comes along and he says to them in verse 22, he says, he called them at the end of verse 21, it says. He saw them mending their nets and he called them. Look what happened in verse 22, because there's a slight difference here. They immediately left the ship. That's what Peter and Andrew did way back in verse 20. But here's something else. And their father. You see the difference? Verse 22. They immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Now, God is putting an extra thing in here. What is he saying? What's he saying? Sometimes when God calls you to follow him, you must leave your family behind. You need to leave those loved ones behind. You need to go where God has called you to go. Not everyone in your house is going to be called. Remember Jesus said elsewhere in the Gospels that he came to set father against son and mother against daughter. He said the enemies of a person is going to be those in their own household. Jesus came to divide households. He was dividing those that were called from those that were not called and those who would ignore the call. What is he showing us here? Not only must we be willing and ready to leave a job if he calls us to do that, but we have to be willing to even leave our very families if he calls us to do that. Are you willing to do that? Maybe he's called you already, and maybe you had to leave family. I will share this with you. There are, there are family and friends that no longer associate with me because I was called away, and I had to leave certain people behind. Does that mean I don't pray for them? Does that mean I don't care about their soul? Of course not. But God has called me to do something, and my first allegiance, my first obedience is to Jesus Christ, not to anyone else. My first allegiance is to him. And so I could insert my name in here where he could say, Thomas, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. And I leave my job and I leave my family and I follow him totally in faith going forward. Have you done that? Has God called you to do that? Yes, it can be painful. Yes, the transition can be different when you suddenly realize that some of your loved ones are not believers and suddenly you are the object of ridicule in their eyes and you've become a Jesus freak, a Bible thumper. You become one of these religious fanatics and all you can talk about is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And people, family and friends may not ever understand you. They may never understand the call on your life. But what I'm saying to you is this. If Jesus calls you, that call supersedes anything else in life. It's bigger than a job. It's bigger than your children. It's bigger than your spouse. It's bigger than your house. Any material blessings you have, it is the most important calling in your life. If Jesus calls you and says, follow me, What's the alternative to not following Jesus? You see, if we follow Jesus and we receive the gift, the free gift of eternal life and our sins are forgiven, we have an eternal life with Jesus and all the other believers. But if Jesus comes to us and he says, follow me, and we say, I want no part of you, no thank you. I'm going to live life my way. I'm going to do things what I want to do. I don't have to follow you. Well, there's a payment for that as well. It's an ugly place that God never intended man to be. It's called hell. So on this side of the grave, we have a choice. 
when the call of Jesus comes out, are we following the call of Jesus or are we playing around with it? See, there's three categories that we can look at. Number one, we follow the call of Jesus explicitly. Jesus says, follow me. We follow him and we follow to the very best of our ability, growing in our faith, submitting our wills to him and leading the life that he chooses to lead us, wherever that would be and whatever he calls you to be, wherever he sends you, wherever he brings into your life, Jesus is the focus, the main focus. So that's category one. We follow Jesus without question. Number two, here's the wishy-washy person. I'll follow Jesus, and yes, I'll go to church on Sundays, and once in a while I'll kick in an offering, and I say prayers occasionally, and yes, I do pray to God when things are going bad. That's a fair-weather Christian. That's somebody who's lukewarm. Remember, God said in Revelation, you either need to be hot, on fire for God, or ice cold, not interested in God. Don't be lukewarm because they're the people he's going to spew out because it's somebody who talks the talk and doesn't walk the walk. There's a lot of those lukewarm Christians around. And you can't really tell if their calling is sure or not and where they're following because they have one foot in spiritual things and they have one foot in the world and they're compromising. And God's, you can't do both. Jesus said you can't love God and money. Money rules the world. Money controls the world. The Bible says do not love the world or the things that are in the world. There's specific things we are not to love and fall in with. So the second category is that person that's kind of tap dancing in both kingdoms. I want God, but I want the world. Then there's the third category, and that third one is someone whose heart is ice cold, it's dead, they're not interested, they don't want to hear the gospel, not interested in Jesus Christ, and when he comes to them and says, follow me, they say, no thank you, not interested, don't want it. I'm living life my way, and maybe they don't believe Jesus is God. Maybe they don't believe he's the Messiah. Whatever reason they have, there are three categories. And all of us, my friends, are in one of those categories. Where are you today in your call? Are you following Christ? Are you following in a hot direction? Are you still playing around in the world and you've got one foot in spirituality and one foot playing around in the world and justifying your behavior and your language and some of the things that you do? Or are you ice cold? As long as we have a breath in our body, as long as we are here on this side of the grave, there is a chance for salvation for anyone who comes to Jesus. The call goes out. The call goes out just the same way he saw, we saw Jesus walking along the Sea of Galilee. He sees the first two brothers. He says, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. They immediately drop their nets and they follow him. He goes on a little while longer. He sees two more brothers, but they have a father with them. He tells them the same thing, follow me. They left their nets, they said goodbye to their father, and they left. And now you see Jesus going down the road with four of his disciples, all of whom not only left their jobs, but left family behind. Sometimes the call of Jesus is not easy. Sometimes he requires a lot of sacrifice from us. Are you willing to do and to give up and to be who Jesus called you to be? Or do you still want to play around in the world? Who am I talking to today? Are you walking with Jesus? Are you following his call? Has he made you a fisher of men? And we need to talk about that for a moment. When we talk about a fisher of men, there, you know, a lot of us can be intimidated because when he talks about being a fisher of men, it's talking about being a witness. And it can be intimidating to be a witness for Christ, because we live in a world that by and large doesn't care about Jesus, not interested in the gospel, doesn't care about the Bible, doesn't believe in it. And because of all of that, it's very difficult and it can be very intimidating to witness to someone. But yet that is what God has called us to do. Now, not everyone is called to pastor a church or to be a preacher. Maybe you're called in to be in the prayer closet. Maybe God has called you to play in music ministry. Maybe God has called you to a mission field, or you're working with an organization that rebuilds homes or plants food for people. Wherever God has called you, you can bloom right where you're planted. God will put you in a situation where you can be a fisher of men. Not everyone is going to be a Billy Graham. Not everyone is going to go out there and have millions of people listening to them. 
Sometimes he may just send you off to the little remotest village because there's two people there that he wants you to reach. And if we're not being obedient, we're not following the call of Jesus, can he make us fishers of men? No, he cannot. Not if we're not willing. We go into that compromised situation or we go into that cold category where we want nothing to do with God. But for those who heed the call, for those who are hearing the call, for those who are already called, or maybe you're hearing the call of Jesus today, right now, as you're watching this. What is God calling you to do? And are you willing, truly willing, to give up everything if called? If he called you to leave your home, to leave your family, to go off and serve him somewhere, are you willing to do it? Because if you're not, then it's just lip service. When Jesus says, follow me, he means follow me totally, completely, all the time, to the very best of our ability. And when we fall and when we compromise things, we're to repent and get back on the track and follow Jesus. I would rather follow Jesus into heaven than follow the world or anything this world has into hell. Do you hear me? I'd rather follow Jesus into heaven than follow anything or anyone in this world and wind up in hell. We all have that choice. The call of Jesus is going out. Have you heard the call? Are you called already? Maybe he hasn't called you yet. The most important thing that we can do in this life, we need to make sure that we're children of God. We need to make sure that we have salvation in Christ. We need to make sure that he is our personal Lord and Savior. Because if he's not, your sins are not paid for. And if you were to die today, if you die in the very next breath and you are not saved, there is no possibility of getting saved on the other side of that last breath when you are on your way to your eternal destiny. Now, I got saved when I was 23 years old, but when I was 22, I was living in the world. I was doing what I wanted to do. I was running from God. I'm sure the call came in earlier than that, but I was resisting it because I didn't want to live according to godly principles. And over the years, God has showed me where I'm wrong, where I still compromise, to this very day, he will convict me on things. There are certain things I shouldn't watch, certain things I shouldn't listen to, certain language I shouldn't use because I am a testimony for him. And when people see me, they hear me, they view me, they're expecting something that I am following Jesus. So I'm not just here on a Sunday preaching Jesus to you and tomorrow morning I'm living back in the world on Monday. That is not the call of Jesus. That is not being a fisher of men. God has given me an assignment. He's given me three specific things to do in my life. And they're the three things I'm doing and nothing else. Everything else has fallen by the wayside. Do you have that kind of calling in your life? Whatever he calls you to, whatever he's called you to do, are you being obedient? Are you listening to him? Let's read this passage again as we finishing this up and we have a few suggestions on how we can serve Jesus better. Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting their net into the sea for they were fishermen. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. One is a call, the second one promise. And they straight away or immediately left their nets and they followed him. No questions asked, they left. They said, okay, you're the way, you're the truth, you're the life. We're following you. Because what you have, Jesus, is infinitely better than anything the world can offer. Then they go on a little further in verse 21. And he sees two other brothers. He sees James and John, their brothers. And they're in the boat with their father, Zebedee. And he called them also. What did they do? They immediately, just like the other brothers, left their nets and their father. And they followed him. And just like that, Zebedee is alone in the boat as his sons are following Jesus Christ. Yes, sometimes we need to say goodbye to our family to carry out the call that Jesus has put on our life. Have you done it? Are you willing to do it? It's scary, yes, but where's our trust? It has to be in Jesus. So if we've heard the call of Jesus, here's a, here's a couple of uh, a few thoughts of where we can go. Our responsibility is to repent, believe the good news of the gospel, and then follow Jesus at any cost. Did you hear me? At any cost, not when it's convenient. We have to do this daily. We have to sacrifice ourselves daily. We have to repent daily. We have to refocus daily. And we have to say, Lord, today is the day you've made, and I want to be obedient to you. 
We have to do it in that order here. Jesus promises. He tells us. He promises, I will make you fishers of men. He's going to prepare us to be involved in whatever vital business of, of saving some people. You and I cannot get somebody saved, but he can use us to share the gospel with someone else. I can reach people that you can't. You can reach people that I can't. Are we taking up that responsibility? Why are we afraid to be witnesses? Why are we afraid to share our faith? Listen, if you and I have been called by Jesus and we have eternal life. Why wouldn't we want everyone to know that? I have eternal life. My sins are forgiven me. Every single day, thousands and thousands and thousands of people are dying and going into a godless eternity. What are you doing about it? What am I doing about it? Who are we reaching for Jesus? Are we sitting back and we're comfortable in our own salvation? Or are we trying to be fishers of men the way God promised that we would be? Someone is in your life, somebody I'm talking to today. There's people in your life right now that don't know Jesus. When is the last time you prayed for them? When is the last time you shared a word of God with them? When is the last time you told them the good news of salvation, of eternal life, that Jesus is the Messiah, he is your Lord and Savior? When is the last time you did that? And yet we can share all kinds of other nonsense, gossip and rumors and share music with one another and encourage each other to watch this show and that show. And yet Jesus takes a back seat. We need to stop that. We need to turn things around. Jesus is the priority, not television, not music, not the malls, not the clothes we wear. Jesus is the priority. Who am I talking to? Is somebody hearing me? Jesus gave us a great commission. At the end of Matthew, he said, go into all the world and make disciples. You can read about that. It's in Matthew at the end of the book, Matthew 28. And he told us what to do. And so as I finish this today, as I end this today, let me encourage you. Have you heard the call of Jesus and are you following Jesus' call? Are you following it? If so, what are you doing about it? Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Not tomorrow, Jesus could be back tomorrow. He could be back in five minutes. You and I have an obligation. If we are following Jesus, to be all in with both feet at all times. And whatever he's called us to do, it should be Jesus. May your will be done and not our will. Let us be more diligent, more bold, more devoted to following the call of Jesus. If this message has blessed you, please. God said in Isaiah 55, he said, my word will not return void. It's going to reach someone. Did it reach you today? Do you know someone that needs to hear this message today? If so, share it with them. And the other thing I would ask, my, my church family, we know about this. We are Bereans. We call ourselves Bereans. Acts 1711 says that the Bereans were more noble than others. They weren't better. They weren't more blessed, but they were more noble. Why? Because they took time every day to read the scriptures, to make sure that what they were hearing was true. I encourage you to do that with this message, with everyone you hear with everyone you see on television, radio, internet, a church you belong to. If you're hearing the word of God preached or teach somewhere, you need to check it out for yourself in the Bible to make sure that what you're hearing is true. There's a lot of bad teaching out there, a lot of bad theology. There's a lot of people that are going to wind up in a really hot place because they're listening to bad theology and pastors and preachers that don't know this. Or they're twisting it around to make it their own agenda. Be very careful. Be discerning. Be a Berean. We have a